Amen. Holy is the Lord. Amen. I greet to you, the church. Peace to the Lord. I, come, I invite everyone to please stand. We're going to open our Bibles into Second John, chapter 20, part of verse 24. Amen. And as the Bible says, Now Thomas, called the twin, one of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples therefore said to him, We have seen the Lord. So he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the print of the nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. And after eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands. And reach your hand here and put it, in t it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Amen. Your brethren may be seated. My brethren the minister of Jesus, the terrain of it, was the more successful one in all of the history. Jesus, he was, he came to the world to die for man, but he also came to introduce to man a new way of life so that man can win death and went, go to what was lost at Adam, the communion with God. That was the eternity. Fellowship with the Lord. All the creatures made by God. Man was the one that received a soul. And men with this had the opportunity to be eternal with the Lord. With Adam, he lost it. But now Jesus comes to the world to show the path for man so that they, he can rescue so that can he be so that man can have access to what was lost and Jesus starts his ministry he separates 12 men and makes his disciples and there, Jesus starts to teach the project of God. He works with these men. And these men give their life to the Lord. Some with worries. And they start to have contact with the Lord. 
they start to see the life of Jesus. They start to see the miracles that Jesus made. They started to listen to the word of Jesus. And they started to... The project of God started to work in their lives, their hearts, to what they were not paying attention to. Desire, wanting, even the, the willingness to do what's the work of the promise of God. Jesus starts passing to them the project that takes them not just those 12 but is all of humanity everyone that wanted to everyone that heard the word of God everyone that opened their hearts so that the project of God can be put in their hearts all these that wanted to receive this they could have also have access to the salvation in Jesus and also life eternal. And Jesus starts passing this to them. It was three years. Lots of experiences. Lots of miracles. Many wonders that Jesus has operated. They were having reason to live lives that didn't have frustrated with everything people that were worn out that people that wanted to end their lives and Jesus with all of their wisdom his his spirituality showing men taking men to listen to his word and Jesus he opens everything those who are the closest to the Lord heard all about the project of the Father Jesus didn't promise to them that they're going to be rich, wealthy, that they're going to have a good life. No. Jesus was very clearly, the world will have problems. But have... Be of good cheer. And these words goes to our hearts even today. The church of the Lord is, receives these attacks by the enemy, but those who are firm in the Lord have, it, have won their battles. We are a testimony of this. Us as a church has lived this. It's interesting how now Jesus says things that he didn't wait that he, he didn't expect. He said, I'm going to go. I'm going to die. But I'm going to be resurrected. The prophets have been prophesied this. And Jesus now confirms this. But he didn't wait that it would be that form. What Jesus literally says happens. So he is in prison, crucified, and then Jesus dies. Now comes a deception, disappointment. Some were even frustrated. Some even went back to their houses. Peter went back to fishing. Some disciples also followed Peter. Some went back to their houses. Even some women. They were there. 
Now uh, their lives transformed. Spared from being killed. But in that moment, Jesus was resurrected. The promise of God was confirmed one more time. And the project of God continues. No one can stop the project of God. No one can lose what is established there in the eternity. The project of God continues. And before you go to the heavens, He needs to rescue those who are weak, those, those adults who have heard His word, but who are balanced, through, shaken through everything that happened. <clears throat> Even some women have seen Jesus and, and testified. Lots were still not believing. The two disciples, before they went back to the houses, they said, yeah, some women saw him but I didn't see we're going home and they said to Jesus this until so Jesus shows himself and then they recognize who was Jesus on the parting breaking of the bread they know who Jesus was and then a church is happening the service is happening after his resurrection Jesus is glorified not even went to the heavens before the Pentecost the disciples united the disappointment we would all be in the Messiah Jesus our Savior he was imprisoned, crucified, and died. And these that were men, scared. They're in that church with the, the service with the windows closed, doors closed, whispering so they won't call any attention to themselves. And that moment, Jesus appeared in the middle of them. How marvelous that is. And Jesus can see all the worries of them. And Jesus passes to them. What was the first? Je Peace be with you. Peace be with you. <clears throat> can you imagine? You've seen Jesus. The, the moments that the world is upside down only crazy things happening you can open the phone you can see the news there's no more news there's no more phone everything's everything that used to be things that were good news the company of phones nowadays it's difficulties you can grab your phone everything I went to pay a thousand dollars just per month just to call Brazil. Thirty years ago, and you would pay a thousand for a phone just to call to your parents, cousins, relatives. The world that we live in live in difficulties this craziness looks like it's upside down everything that's right is wrong everything that's wrong is right you don't know anything anymore you have to go like God will give according to God's will every day more people are doing crazy things people that are lost without love without comprehension we see this people like this people that are living in the moment like the disciples were living here trembled some didn't even want to leave the house 
You leave your house, you have to drive to another, then to you. There's a group there that the fence of driving to see if there's places in the back, and then to look in the front and drive. It's the world that we live in today, just like the disciples. It's interesting that the same operation that God reached those men, those disciples, have reached the hearts of men today. The same operation have reached to us. And the same message of Jesus someday reached our hearts. It's peace be with you. Peace be with you. This word is a word that's really preached, really heard. Peace be with you. It's a word that is really discussed through the governments. It's funny because man still doesn't have to reach in a cur a core to say peace to men. To not have interest of your own, there is no peace. There's lots of fights, wars today in the world, but if there's no interest of a great interest, there is no peace. There's no accord. But a word that is discussed here, and little people reach, the church faithful in the Lord has reached us. Because we live in the world, really trouble, really full of trials, but the people of the Lord have faith that our names are written in the book of Jesus Christ. That's what makes us go confront the world. That's what makes us confront everything. Us, as a church, pass through all this, but we confront all this not with one obstacle, but as a trial from God. And those who are faithful to the Lord, who are opening their hearts to the Lord, have won all of those battles. Some faster than others. Some battles can be won in seconds, minutes. Some weeks, days, years, months. Because we're not in the position. We don't put the position for God to cure. But those that are trying to prevent other things and being faithful to your call to the Lord, to live your life in the presence of the Lord, and to have a life where they're servicing to the Lord, praising the Lord, but they're praising the Lord. They're in their hearts glorifying the Lord. Even having fear, they were Look, seeking closeness to the Lord. This is what makes us different. Because the faithful church, everything that we see out there, but we are here in our hearts with the Lord. Every day that we enter the house of the Lord, could be midnight, could be a, a service at home, could be at someone else's house, you kneel down and you hear this voice peace be with you because this is the promise of God where there is two or three re reunion in my name there I will be and that word is every day in our lives the world over there with lots of things but if they look for the Lord if they seek for what's shown to the men through Jesus, they would have received this same word. Peace be with you. Who knows if the world will be better. 
who knows if today the community, the locations of jobs, the families will be way better. Who knows? Lord Jesus, he brought this to those disciples. Peace be with you. Thomas was it at that day. The first service, Thomas was it. He lost the service. He had his work, making more money over there, paying the bills. He wasn't at church. But they said to Thomas, you missed the service. You didn't go to service that day. Jesus showed up there. Oh, I don't believe. I will only believe if I see him again, if I touch his hands, if I put my finger in the hole in his hands. Eight days later, another service happens. Thomas goes. When he was there in the Royal Church, Jesus shows up and he says the same thing. Peace be with you. Because all the times we serve, we have a service in the Lord, the first thing that starts is peace be with you. When the man confesses their, their sins to the Lord, we receive the peace. We receive secureness, the certain, the certainness that at that moment the Lord has forgiven our sins. There isn't any other. When you open your heart to th think that to confess to the Lord, and the Holy Spirit sees the the repentance in your heart. God forgives your sins through the blood of Jesus Christ and you are turned into a new creature and you receive that peace that you only find in Jesus. The service is for this. Our service to the Lord is this. We don't come here just to a reunion. No, we come here because we want to speak to the Lord. We come here because we want to have an experience with the Lord. We come here to offer a service to the Lord. And the voice of God we want to hear. Because when we have a service to the Lord, we don't we don't come home with a heart empty. We always come home with a full heart full of happiness. He always comes full of peace. And at that moment, Jesus, when he appears to men, he goes, Thomas, put your finger here. He puts his finger there, also on his hip. Here are the marks. And my brethren, time passes. The important thing is that the man continues the same. The incontrollity of the man, the lack of commitment to the Lord is the same. The man always wants to see the marks of God. They can't believe. They can't just believe from hearing and have he wants to see he wants to touch the funny thing is he says that faith is a firm foundation of the things that you can't see but when you have an experience with the Lord he needs to have the Holy Spirit make that he can believe in God. You know why? Because we need to believe in the Creator. We need to believe that he can make a miracle. More than a miracle. Man, when he 
make believes the one that makes the miracle he believes in God you know why because the miracle many times falls into for forgiveness the things that the Lord made in your life a week ago 20 years ago maybe you already forgotten But when you have an experience with the Lord, when you have an experience that marks your life, you never forget. Never forget. Because it's what makes us want this. It's the Holy Spirit that takes us always wanting to come back to Jesus. But lots of people, lots of people need to see the mark. Lots of people need to touch to believe and Jesus says here touch here on my side touch on the print of the nails and the Bible says to us that the church it is the body of Christ we are the body of Christ and lots of times when man comes to church our and we give invitations the visitors they will see the marks of Jesus in the middle of church for certain Jesus won't come here and show you his marks but us as church body of Christ we need to give testimony to what Jesus does in our lives we will preach the revolution this is us showing the marks of Christ here Thomas touch here put your finger look at my hands put give give me your hand and put it on my side and don't be unbelieving but believing so what Jesus said there is exactly what God is doing in our lives. What marks are these? It's the mark of the love of God. The power of God. Are the marks of the glory of God. This is what the Lord tonight wants in us. For people who are visiting. The people who, may, who are part of our circle of friendship. It's the marks of God. The operation in the life of the church. And you who came in today, you need to see this. You know why? Because what we preach is real. Because what we preach is real. He said, Thomas, touch here. You feel the print of the nails? I'm alive. It's real. I died. But on the third day, I was resurrected. I am alive in your midst. And this is what the Lord wants to do here. You can touch in the Lord. You can feel Him walking in the midst of us. He's real, alive, with grace, with mercy, and above all, with peace. You will only receive this if you really open up your hearts and let the Lord speak with you. And the first thing he says is peace be with you. Amen. That the Lord will be blessing you. Let's hear a song. And at this moment, you're going to be talking to the Lord. Lord, I want to feel. I want to hear your voice. Oh, yeah. I want to be a new creature I want to come out of this place believing in the salvation of the Lord
Amen. Glory to God. We may be standing now. Let's have a word of glorification to the Lord. Lord, we glorify you. We for one more opportunity to serve you, Lord. For to be in your presence, Lord. For this word, Lord. Yeah, you prepared for our lives, Lord. How great it is to be in your house, Lord. To hear your voice, Lord. To speak to our hearts, Lord. And your songs that speak profound, per, profoundly into our hearts. And it's good to serve you, Lord. We glorify you, Lord. Because there are lots of reasons that we have, Lord. To give you all of our gratitude. All of our... All of our praise, Lord. Because there's lots of things that you have done for us. But we glorify you with all of our heart. Because we love you, Lord. Because we love to serve you, Lord. We love to make part of your work, Lord. We glorify you for everything you've done. For every life that you have brought to your presence every this night. Because we know we could be in other places. But the Lord made it that we can be here, Lord. extended your hands every single day you have liberated us from any accident Lord and given us all our gratitude for everything that the Lord has done and even for everything that the Lord has done in the name of Jesus Amen the Lord has shown a couple of gifts and one gift a woman that came in here she had looked a lot a form to be loved in lots of places but the love that she looks is not the love of man it's the love of the Lord and she needs to really be be the mercy of God she already passed through lots of places but the word says that she needs to look for the Lord's the Lord's purpose first. And through that she will really find that she has a father that loves her a lot. And the Lord wants to give her this certainness, this peace that she will only find in the Lord. The world has lots of things to offer. But everything passes away. The world says to her, God doesn't exist. Salvation, things of church. My grandfather doesn't, doesn't exist. It exists. Look at the marks in the hand of God and Jesus. Look at the mark in the life of church. The church of the Lord is the greatest testimony that the Lord exists you need you need to testimize a man walked in here has lots of plans a lot of decisions to make but one of them especially is revolved around a son in his house the Lord says, no hurt, no rush. From today on, you will be receiving the peace of the Lord. The man that has peace, he, is, he has tranquility. Sometimes the rush of life makes us not peaceful. But at this night, the Lord has said, peace be with you. And you're going to see how peace can operate. Love. Love to forgive. Love to in, to understand what is happening. Sometimes we don't stop to listen. But at this night, the Lord is giving you this opportunity. <coughs> so
so he can listen first his voice so you can hear the voices that are in your house the love of God this night is giving you this experiences for you to be a sensitive person not just in the house of the Lord but in your house as well let's pray to right after the prayer if you please and a moment even a prayer for you and your family the brethren here are here willing to pray for you so you can receive the peace of the Lord we put in your presence in your altar one more time our lives Lord and for the, from the songs singed and the glorifications made uh, your word uh, from the signals manifested of your power we glorify you Lord because there was nothing that we needed because you are God providing everything in your presence and everyone that came to your house with their hearts cold receive our offer our song and our gratitude Lord and give us peace and so that we can have a night of tranquility in your presence and the church in Port St. Lucie and the people that are returning we ask for liberation and bless your servants in the name of Jesus Amen in the name of Jesus and the wonderful grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior, and the love of God, of our eternal Father, the sweet and tender of consolations of the Holy Spirit may be ground upon us now and forevermore. Amen. You may be seated. Tomorrow at 1030, we won't have church here. We're going to have a church special in Holland at 9 a.m. And then a church, special church, after the breakfast. Next Saturday, we're also going to have a wedding. No, no, aqui, view. <laughs> or else we're going to be in difficulty but we're going to see what we can do to make it better to attend our brethren we need to be together in prayer to all the peace of the Lord